Hi, if you remember back in March 2019, geez, that was a long time ago now, I started a long-term battery leakage experiment where I got seven different brands of batteries and I discharged them uh, in various ways uh, to see if we can, which actual brands actually leaked. And uh, I did a follow-up video 10 months later after that to show that, well, it was a complete and epic failure. None of them had leaked at all. Um, and then I've done uh, like the odd, I've looked at them over the time they've just just been sitting in storage in these uh, containers here and uh, yeah they haven't leaked but I was just in the bunker the other day and we got one thank you we got one yes I we actually got some leaking brand batteries and you can see here, no, they weren't all in this uh, container. I had to uh, fizz, I sorted them. I actually shot a video down in the bunker, but something like on my shoe phone. Um, and it turns out that I wasn't actually recording or something dumb like that. So I brought them all back to the lab here. And um, I put the failed ones that were leaking in to this container here. And well, there's the culprits. We'll get them out and take a closer look up in a minute. But uh, yeah, you can see these are all like the original uh, tubs. And as you can see, there's no leakage on any of these on the bottom that I can see. I might need, oh, actually, is that Duracell? I just noticed that. Is that Duracell starting to leak there but anyway if you remember the original video i put like uh black marks like two black marks on ones that had been double discharge were they and ones that were single discharge i can't remember i'll link in the video down below but let's actually get that duracell have we actually got another one Whoa. oh i don't know it's hard to tell. Oh, if you get the tongue at the right angle, maybe. Anyway, they're going to leak out of the bottom side, of course, of the negative end, because that's where the seal uh, usually is on these uh, double A's. So as you can see, none of the other ones. That one, there's a little bit of crustiness on there. Sorry about uh, seeing through the plastic. Isn't that terrific, is it? But yeah, you can see that they haven't basically failed. And the main culprits, everyone was... Oh, yeah, I bet every last dollar that the Dura leaks, um, as people call them, Dura cells, they're going to leak, guaranteed. And and, and like none of the Duracells have actually leaked. In fact, I, I think, oh yeah, there's another couple of ones in here um, as well. So we've got some Krusty Burger ones in there. But as you can see, like most of them didn't leak, like single discharge, double discharge. And of course, if you saw the original video, my original video, I think I had a 1K resistor eh, on here. It's all tangled up. Had a 1K resistor on here discharging. And even those ones, look, they have not, oh, no. No, there's a little bit of crustiness on the back of that, but like it hasn't, basically, it has not leaked, right? Even with the resistors still on them, like year, like a couple of years later. And then I repeated the experiment with a one meg resistor, was it, or something? Anyway, um, there's, yeah, the energizers, these haven't leaked either, right? So I've still got a bunch that are still in their original holders. And as you can see, the Duracells have not leaked at all, which is remarkable because everyone knows the Duracells. They've even got the nickname Duraleaks because they're just classic for leaking. But as I've shown in my videos, um, Energizer ones also leak and other brand uh, ones that I've shown in various leakage videos over the year. I'll try and link in. In fact, do I have a playlist? I might have a playlist for battery leakage. <laughs> I've done that many videos. I'll have to get a playlist up and running. But yeah, as you can see, like none of those in that still have the loads directly connected to them have failed. So obviously what's going on here is my simple uh, test with the resistor like this and it, like even like a lot of people suspected like the pressure from the spring contacts might actually be causing something, you know, when you put it in a product, it's got a physical tension on the end of the cell like that. And some people's hypothesis was that, yeah, putting the physical pressure on the end of the battery actually causes them to leak. But, you know, that doesn't seem to be the case. I have not got one in these battery holders that has actually leaked. So from my small scale experiment here, you know, we might be able to rule that out. But um, yeah, I suspect it's how they're actually discharged and under what conditions that they're discharged to what point. Obviously, having just the resistor on there, which is going to work right down until, you know, the, the last electron leaves this uh, sucker, then um, that is different to say a DC to DC converter in a uh, product. So my follow-up plan was to buy like 10 different brand uh, AA torches, um, flashlights for you Yanks, um, you know, with just like a single AA battery in them and uh, like see if they, and see which brand of those 
uh, leaks with the Duracell, which is the one most prone to leak, which seems to be uh, the Duracell. It's not in my testing, but basically everyone's anecdotal experience. Um, and see in which one of those happens to leak. It might be the properties of the DC to DC converter and how and the load on it and stuff like that. So I suspect that is more to play than anything else. But yeah, it's the white coat syndrome. I couldn't get any of these things to fail for years, but they have finally failed. So I don't know at what point they've been sitting down in a storage bunk. I have monitored them all the time, but I think they lasted like at least a year, you know, a year and a half or something. I last looked at them and they hadn't leaked, so it's sometime after that. So check it out, we've got uh, three Panasonics, uh, two Vardas, a Energizer, a Maxell, and a Wallaby uh, brand, which is just like a generic, like, you know, supermarket uh, brand here in Australia. And you can see the leakage on them. And of course, the white crystalline stuff that you see, that's actually uh, potassium carbonate. And that's formed by the culprit inside alkaline batteries, which is the potassium hydroxide. And then if that leaks out, if the uh, seal inside the battery uh, fails, the, the rubber seal, you can see that black seal around the negative end of the the battery there and if the pressure builds up inside due to the electrochemistry then the potassium hydroxide leaks out in liquid form and I've got a video which I'll link in showing a, a battery when it was actually in the liquid state so it's quite rare to catch them in the liquid uh, state usually uh, when it leaks out it um, then combines with the uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and potassium hydroxide becomes potassium carbonate the white crystalline uh, stuff that you see here so yeah you can see the See the crustiness of it. Oh, absolutely terrible mural. Anyway, this wallaby one is interesting because that's the positive terminal, right? So it did that have a seal at the... Like, it looks like it's got a seal at the negative end. Oh, I have to get another wallaby one that hasn't failed. As you can see, nope, there's the uh, seal around the negative end there. And the positive end, no, nope, it's just like a complete metal cap like that. So... The only way that you can get leakage around the positive end, like that, um, unless it, I don't know, somehow got through the metal, is um, just physically uh, for it to be the way it was physically stored, and the liquid ran out and just went down the other end, and then it starts to corrode the metal and everything else. So it didn't leak out that end, it would have leaked out this end, and uh, yeah, it just went down the side of the battery and just due to the physical orientation of how this thing was stored. Now I'd say that the winner has to go to this uh, Panasonic e volta here. That's just, that's beautiful. Look at that. It's just leaked all the way along there and <laughs> right along. Once again, it's how the thing's been stored, but I think that is quite beautiful. It's leaked to the positive end as well. And this Vada one, once again, um, yeah, I can't remember how it was, these were, <laughs> were stored, but uh, this was after my move, after I moved out of the uh, infamous uh, flooded uh, lab and stuff. Um, so yeah, look at that. Oh, wow, black as the ace of spades. Unbelievable. Anyway, made in Germany, thank you very much. But out of the seven different brands, it was Wallaby, two Vardas, three Panasonic, so they're the worst. One energizer slightly, I mean, you know, like that's barely there, right? That's, I, I wouldn't even call that leaking, really. It's just like, sort of like started two. So I wouldn't even say energizer's one of them and Maxell. So I'd say only those four brands really wouldn't count that energizer. Four brands failed and like none of the Duracells. I couldn't believe it. None of the Philips, none of the Toshiba. Yeah, and I can't remember why I had a grab bag of uh, these. This is the original bag that they would have gone to the uh, bunker storage unit in. But uh, yeah, like I think one one of them leaked in there, so there is a bit of uh, you know crustiness down the bottom. But there were basically just one in that like sealed bag. So here's all of the Duracell ones in this test, and uh, yeah, you can see like maybe some crustiness on there that actually came from. The packet, you can see that maybe, right? Maybe there's starting to something starting to happen down there. But we're talking like over two years, and these were all discharged in various different ways, and none of them have leaked. Of course, this doesn't mean that Duracells don't leak. Everyone knows they damn well leak. Um, in your own experience, but it's uh, the conditions under which you discharge them, and I just happened to discharge them under the completely wrong conditions. That none of these, surely the odds were. As some of these Duracells would fail. No, 
Not one of them. And as I said, none of the other brands, we're talking Fujitsu, we're talking e Eclipse, another cheapo hardware store brand, Fujitsu again. A couple of the Panasonics didn't leak, the Coles, uh, which is a supermarket brand, um, Alkaline, but I've shown that they've leaked uh, before. I had some I don't know, juice bank batteries, you know, you buy those on eBay, just some generic one hung low brand. And Philips and Maxell, and none of these... Um, have failed more Fujitsu and Panasonic and Eclipse, um, but I have seen the Eclipse ones um, fail before. So I've seen like most of these brands fail before, but I thought the Panasonics would have been really good. So I'm disappointed that the Panasonics like had the highest number of failures in my, mm, albeit failed test here, but still, um, isn't that fascinating? And it's interesting to note the difference in construction between two Duracells. We've got the regular copper top here and then the Duracell Duralock. Um, yeah, Duralock technology. So I guess this is their Duralock. You can see that it's got like a like a fabric kind of thing. It's got like a like a fabric seal, something like that. That's what it looks like. Anyway, um, so that's that's rather unusual. Whereas your regular copper top has like folded over metal and there'll be an O-ring around, like a rubber ring around um, the side there. So yeah, they're very different end termination technologies and they're both Duracells. Here's the Duralock one up close with the macro lens. Yeah, that's some sort of fabric. It's almost like it's separated and it's like, I don't know, a bit like it, it hasn't leaked. But that's that's all loosey goosey. What the? What's going on there? I don't, you know, I, I don't know. It doesn't instill a lot of confidence, does it? Duralock technology and Duracell batteries protects the power ingredients and reduces the self discharge of the batteries after prolonged shelf storage. Energy is stored in a core made of highly purified zinc, which is enclosed by a unique separator that guards against internal shorting, and surrounded by nickel plated steel to reduce corrosion. Duralock technology makes unused Duracell batteries fresh and powered up to 10 years in ambient storage. Now, just as an interesting aside, I just recently learned this. I can't believe I didn't know this, but uh, these uh, carbon zinc batteries or dry cell uh, batteries, as they are called. I've been having issues um, <laughs> shipping my multimeters with these batteries in them via uh, DHL. And uh, it's, yeah, these are dry cell, right? Well, in theory, these shouldn't leak like alkaline batteries because everyone knows that alkaline batteries, you know, they famously leak, whereas these dry cells, um, in theory, shouldn't. So what I did know is that, of course, alkaline batteries are also known as alkaline manganese batteries because they contain manganese, like, you know, 30 to 40 uh, percent manganese typically. And uh, th but what I didn't know is that these carbon zinc batteries also contain the same amount of manganese in them. So these are carbon zinc manganese batteries, really. But I've never heard them um, been called that at all. But the difference is these do not contain the pesky potassium hydroxide that alkalines do. And that is what, of course, leaks out. The potassium hydroxide liquid, as I said, uh, forms with carbon dioxide and forms potassium carbonate and, uh, you know, turns into acid and eats through all your metal battery terminals and everything else. So your carbon zinc dry cell batteries do not uh, contain that. But I don't know. Um, I think I have seen these technically leak, but it's not potassium hydroxide because in theory they shouldn't contain any if they do no well, they're not proper carbon zinc batteries so there you go um barely none of the like duracell and energizer basically none of those uh failed and we just had a couple of others and panasonic seemed to be the worst so yeah after all that after like what two and a half year march 2019 i originally started this i don't know let me know <laughs> thoughts comments down below should i start this test again um, as I said, if I did this, I would find a product that they that they fail in. So I'd buy like, you know, <laughs> 10 different cheap $2 torches or $2 remote controls on eBay or something like that. I'd buy 10 of them. I'd put the batteries in. I'd do a couple of months. This is a two-step experiment. Figure out which product actually causes, seems to cause them to fail. And then I'd buy 10 of that particular brand product. And then I'd put the batteries in. Let me know if you think... That's the best way to do it. Or let us know if you've got a guaranteed way to make these things fail because 
obviously my uh, discharge into two different, I think 90%, one was halfway, one was 90% or something, and then I had like a control one that was like fresh out of the packet. But of course, I keep retweeting all the time. People send me, please uh, tweet me your battery leakage things. I love it when people do that. And I uh, retweet those and they show like an unopened packet of Duracells just completely leaked, right? It's just, uh, it's ridiculous. Anyway, there you go. We did actually get a result um, after all those years. Like, so maybe like at least a year and a half um, it took to at least do that to some of the brands. And curiously, it's not really the ones I expected. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, comments down below and check out our exclusive content, which I um, sometimes put over on my Odyssey channel. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.